All right, here we go, everybody. Locked on Thursday crossover edition right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Matt Derry, Locked On Lions, Lauren Cox, everybody from Locked On Bears is with me. Lions hosting the Bears New Year's Day coming up this Sunday. A little rematch from week 10 when the Lions knocked off Chicago 31 to 30. And that turned out to be a pretty good football game and a comeback. Locked On Lions and Locked On Bears, a Thursday crossover presented by Price Picks. Price Picks is daily fantasy made easy. You pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their prize picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code LOCKEDON. That's prizepicks.com, promo code LOCKEDON. Lauren, uh, things have not been good for the Bears, obviously. Uh, what's what's kind of the vibe in Chicago? Are they trying to win, trying to lose? Jalen Carter sweepstakes? What's What's happening there? Yeah, they'll never say that they're trying to lose. And they did, they have declined publicly to sit down Justin Fields for the rest of the season. So, you know, entering this game, the Bears are still trying to win and still trying to see what they can amass for those final two games to kind of lead them into 2023 on a high note. And we've heard head coach Matt Eberflus say that over these last two games, they really want to see how well this team can work on finishing some of these games and, and being able to make the big plays in the fourth quarter when they need them the most. And I think the last Detroit game is a pretty good example of their inability to do so. I mean, Fields had the pick six there early in the fourth quarter. The defense failed to make some stops down the stretch, and then he was sacked a couple of times on their final drive. And they weren't able to really play a full four-quarter game there and finish it out on top, despite the lead that they had in that contest. So all eyes are going to be on how this team kind of wraps up this matchup and and is able to – because they had a, a lead on the Bills and the Eagles the last two weeks at halftime. <laughs> excuse me they just weren't able to they just weren't able to finish those games either lauren cox uh, with me uh coughing <laughs> lauren and i were talking before we get on and that, that's the beauty of the end of the season is we're in that cold and flu and covid booster season and so uh poor lauren is gutting it out today we appreciate him doing that <laughs> you're like the bears you're uh you started off great now you're coughing at the end right yeah <laughs> but we're powering through <laughs> Uh, Lions vibe, Lauren, is pretty simple. Um, everybody was so excited last week going into Carolina. Oh my gosh, they've won six of the six of seven and they're at 500 and going to the playoffs and, you know, let's get the, let's get the, uh, plans for a, a playoff, uh, uh, parade downtown. And then they went into Charlotte and just got destroyed. And the Panthers were absolutely relentless on them, ran all over them. And the Lions, for some odd reason, spent the pregame and the postgame, uh, doing a lot of talking about uh, the Bank of America field and the stadium and how rock hard it was and how the turf was was unsafe and unplayable. And it was like, that's not Dan Campbell-esque football. That's not Dan Campbell like to have his players kind of whining a bit. I think they've gotten away from that. It was a clunker of a game last week. And they really want to bounce back at home right now. They're in this thing. It's kind of ironic that the Bears could play, play spoiler on the Lions to help the Packers out of all things. But that's possible. So... Uh, but I think the Lions will come out with a much better performance this week than last. That was just unlike them. Their defense has improved. They're, they're playing better. This is not a great defense. I mean, DVOA numbers are still pretty high in the upper 20s, but um, it's been better. But this past this past Saturday against Carolina, I mean, the, uh, Deontay Foreman and Chuba Hubbard, uh, they had, it was shade, shades of for our Chicago listeners, uh, Sayers and Peyton. I mean, those two guys were just unbelievable. And you'd figure, Lauren, that this week the Bears would try to run the football because that's what Chicago does. And they'll watch the Carolina tape and see that, right? Yeah. What what went so poorly for them? Because, I mean, we remember back in week 10, Justin Fields had like 100, almost 150 yards rushing and had a big breakaway, like 67-yard touchdown run in there. So it's definitely going to be an emphasis level uh, emphasis for the Chicago Bears to try and get that running game going again. And we'll see if they want to put Fields in as much harm's way as <laughs> this late in the season. But why, why were things breaking down so bad? Is that on the, the defensive line, the linebackers, collective? What happened? I think it was everybody. Uh, part of it was scheme. Uh, give Carolina credit. Their offensive coaching staff, Ben McAdoo, of all people, uh, pulling guards, pulling tackles. They won at the line of scrimmage. The Lions get destroyed at the line of scrimmage, which, again, their old line and D-line have been have been really good lately. Uh, not this past week. And, then the, the, and I mentioned this on Tuesday's show. Deshaun Elliott, their strong safety didn't play. And they started Ifiatu Melifanwu from Syracuse, uh, a, a second-year guy, and he wasn't ready. Uh, he was making tackles 30 yards down the field, which is great, but he was not where he needed to be. And they So if they can get Deshaun Elliott back, their starting strong safety this week, 
uh, that'll be that'll be pretty key. I want to ask you about fields, and then we'll get to kind of some storylines too. But I, uh, you know, you think they're going less of design, <clears throat> excuse me, designed runs for him because he's so banged up. I know he got destroyed in that at the end of the Philly game, but what what's the story there? Yeah, so they've done less of the like direct snap to fields and he's the only ball carrier, you know, quarterback lead quarterback power type stuff. But against Buffalo this last week, they did call a ton of read options. They are still giving him those plays. Now, most teams have been overplaying fields and trying to make him hand it off the majority of the time. So as a result, we haven't seen him be able to be as utilized as, as a, for like a designed running quarterback in that game. And then this offensive line has been so banged up there without both of their starting guards last week. And we're not sure, we're not sure exactly what that's going to look like this week either, that the pass protection is not good enough to, you know, hold, hold on to the ball very long and extend these plays and, you know, get out of the pocket that way. So he's been getting rid of the ball more quickly as a passer, which is honestly a good thing that Bears fans have been looking for more of from Justin Fields, but it has overall limited some of the quarterback rushing as a, as a focal point of the offense. But given how well it worked against Detroit the first time, I have to imagine it's going to be a point of emphasis this week until Detroit really shows that they're committed to stopping it. And health wise on that O line, uh, I know Jenkins and a few others have been out. What's going on there? Yeah. So it was Cody Whitehair and Tevin Jenkins, both out this past week. So they were rolling with their former right tackle, Larry Borum at left guard, and they were rotating some veterans at, at the right guard spot. And it's, it's messy. It's, it's not a good group. And you saw this offensive coordinator really try to hide his offensive line as much as possible. A lot of play action, a lot, like even more so than what we were used to and a lot of rollouts and moving pockets and then, you know, emphasizing getting rid of the ball more quickly fields, just, just getting to his check downs more, more quickly. It just, getting through the play to kind of know that, hey, I just don't have the three or four seconds to stand in here and wait for the downfield bomb to fully develop every time. I just got to sometimes take my running back that's swinging out of the backfield and maybe it only gets two yards, but I'm not going to take that extra hit in the pocket. Lauren Cox locked on Bears. Matt Derry locked on Lions. Thursday crossover, Lions and Chicago coming up uh, Sunday at Ford Field at 1 o'clock. Let's get to some key matchups. We'll do that uh, coming up next. This episode, though, is brought to you by our friends at Audible. Audible is releasing a slate of new football podcasts that we know you're sure going to love. That's why you'll be able to find an episode from the league available now as a bonus episode right here on Locked On NFL. Narrated by Super Bowl champion, legendary smack talker Richard Sherman and sports broadcaster and rising star Taylor Rooks. The league is an eight-part docuseries about the most bizarre, inspirational, and unlikely stories connected to America's favorite sport. We know it as pro football. You won't want to miss these untold stories spanning from the 40s through right now head over to locked on nfl for a bonus episode of the league or catch the full series wherever you get your podcasts available now audible get in the game all right so the lions looking to sweep the season series of from the bears chicago looking to snap an eight game losing streak as they sit at three and 12 bears coming to a ford field lauren cox locked on bears what do you see as a, as a matchup and something you want to watch this weekend yeah, I look back to the, the first game, right, and remember how Amon Ross St. Brown really went off in that game. I think he had, what, 10 catches for over 100 yards. I don't I don't remember the exact production there, but it just felt like the Bears didn't have an answer for him, especially off of play action and finding that space, like, in between the safeties and the linebackers, sort of that intermediate area of the, the underneath coverage. And I'm really looking to see how the Bears approach that this week because Jalen Johnson is on injured reserve. Their other outside cornerback, Kendall Vildor, is on injured reserve. And of course, Eddie Jackson is also on injured reserve. And so this Bears secondary right now is starting four rookies. It's, you know, the only non-rookie is there. Their safety, DeAndre Houston Carson. And, you know, your two second round picks aren't necessarily the same level of rookie as your two undrafted rookie free agents playing big snaps in the secondary. But it's it's a vulnerability. I mean, this defense is pretty much vulnerable at all three levels. But when you have that level of inexperience, Anytime you have a guy who already knows, already smells a little blood in the water against this defense and has found ways to just find the spaces in the zone, it's it's a very real concern for me as to how the Bears might approach that. And you know, you don't even have a Sanborn at linebacker either. So if he can just get behind the likes of Nick Morrow and, and Joe Thomas and Matt Adams at that spot, there should be plenty of room for a guy like Amon Ross St. Brown to cook in this one. Are they are these legitimate? I'm not I'm not saying they're not legitimate injuries, but would you say some of these if this team was 12 and three, would some of these guys be out there as opposed to three and 12? Or are they just kind of being overly cautious and smart about it? Cause why rush guys back when you're out of it? Like they are. Yeah. I think there's probably a little bit of that overly cautiousness that like Jalen Johnson went from like 
questionable on Friday on, or questionable on Thursday on the injury report to on injured reserve on Friday. He was dealing with mm. like a, a rib injury and like an ankle and he had practiced even in like a limited capacity. And then they just kind of said, IR like, like done for the season. We kind of were looking around like, wait, wait, how did that all of a sudden get so severe so quickly? So I, I do think there are some aspects of that, but at the same time, they could just as easily have done that with Justin Fields and packed that in. And they're saying, no, even though he is dealing with a, a left shoulder sprain from earlier this season and he got stepped on pretty bad last week against the bills and didn't finish that game. They, I mean, they were already down three scores anyway, so they put Peterman in for garbage time, but they, you know, they could easily find the injury excuse for fields if they wanted to, and have not chosen to there. So I think it's a little bit more like the more experienced veteran players that don't need the development and, and don't really need to be on the field that they are a little bit more inclined to say, yeah, uh, we're just shutting them down. Well, that's a matchup I'm looking at. You mentioned it. I mean, Justin Fields run for ran for 147 yards against the Lions, four touchdowns, two on the ground, two passing. Played a really good game, but you know, I, I make the joke, Lauren, all the time about Hall of Fields. I just am I'm astounded at at, at the Chicago media, not you, but others that just are claiming that this guy is the second coming. I, I think he's <laughs> certainly exciting, but when Dan Orlovsky weeks ago on ESPN says he's in the MVP discussion. I just, any game I've watched, I watched obviously the, every snap of the Lions-Bears game. I, I watched a ton of the Eagle game two weeks ago, and they need a throw. Late in the game, he doesn't he doesn't deliver it. I mean, he can run, but the the, the matchup, I guess, for me is uh, the Lions can't let him run like that again um, and get away with it. I think they did la the last time, and they got good pressure on him those last two series to force those, those sacks and interceptions, but um, how will the Lions handle that ground game. They were so bad against Foreman and Hubbard this week. Even Darnold uh, ran a little bit against the Lions um, in Carolina. So what adjustments do they make? Do they move Okuda back up to the box as sort of a hybrid type for tackling purposes? Is Elliott out there? Will Derek Barnes play more at linebacker over Anzalone and Rodriguez, whose PFF grades were brutal this past week, uh, just to try to stop fields? It, it'll, be, it'll be interesting to see how the Lions handle that. But that, that to me... They got away with it last time. I mean, allowing him to do what he did on the ground and run for nearly a buck fifty, like you said, and still win is good. But they, if they get into another thirty-one thirty type game. It could go the other way this time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean that was one that was we were on the edge of our seats quite a bit at the end there, and it just you know it's who who can make the one fewer mistake on the stretch. And obviously the Bears have been the team <laughs> that makes the more mistakes. And if I'm a Lions fan, I'm not super super worried in this game. I mean the Bears have lost what I think eight in a row now. Yeah. And it's not like, you know, it, it's not like they're, uh, they're, they're shining in on this upswing that all of a sudden they're going to come into Detroit and really be firing on all cylinders. I mean, I think Detroit has so much more at stake for them and I think it's going to be a good game, but, but uh, I, I do think this is a spot where the lions can feel pretty good as a bounce back opportunity after what went wrong so badly against Carolina fields injuries now are, are what, I mean, I know, I know he had the uh, he got stepped on last week. I think he had a shoulder a couple of weeks ago. What what are they officially saying this week about what he has? Yeah, so he's not showing up on the injury report at this point. You know, he's full participant and everything. But yeah, he he had the left shoulder strain you know weeks ago now, and it's the kind of thing that he's just been playing through. And I don't know that it it you know fully heals when you're playing starting quarterback every single week and still taking those hits. So it's just sort of like a lingering thing there. And then yeah, stepped in stepped on the foot kind of hard and. It took him out of the game and, and he's he's also cramped up in like three or four or five games now where he leaves the game and goes to the locker room and gets an IV and comes back out. So there's just there's a certain feeling there of like holding your breath every time and just hoping that the team continues to prioritize his safety and, you know, just just run out of bounds, slide. Don't worry about putting your body in the line and diving for the first down or the goal line in a game like this when, yeah, you want to beat the Lions, but I, I don't know that it really matters that much. Lions five and a half point favorites uh, right now, according to our friends at Bet Online. Let's get into uh, the, some predictions. We will do that uh, coming up next when we talk to Lauren Cox, Matt, and Lauren with you on the Thursday crossover. Lions and Bears. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. For pro football, college bowl season, where we are right now, NBA, NHL. They've got it all for you at BetOnline.net. If you love sports podcasts, you can find those as well. At Bet Online, they're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. Like you said, Lions, Bears, over under spread, five and a half. Look it all up. Get all the numbers, first half numbers, and all of that if you want to wager on that at betonline.net. You go to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet Online, it is where the game starts. And the Locked On Thursday crossover is brought to you by our friends 
at NHTSA. Did you know that driving high is considered driving under the influence? That's right. Driving under the influence of marijuana is against the law in every state, even in the states where marijuana is legal. That means driving high could get you a DUI. If you think law enforcement officers can't tell when you're driving high, you're wrong. Your friends can tell, coworkers, family members, parents, everybody, they can tell. All right, so what makes, the, what makes you think that law enforcement officers don't know when you're driving high? Driving under the influence of marijuana can slow your response time and change how you perceive time and speed. So if you think you're fine to drive when you're high, you're not. Because the bottom line is, if you feel different, you drive different. Simple. The driving high is, under the, is driving under the influence. Remember, drive high, get a DUI. Paid for by NHTSA. All right, let's do this. Matt and Lauren with you on a Thursday. Locked on crossover. Happy holidays, everybody. Uh, bears and lions. All right, Lauren, are you uh, are you of the ilk here that uh, that somehow, some way, the uh, the bears end this losing streak and get get to four wins, or or are you thinking that the, the streak continues? There's just no way. Yeah, the the lions' performance against the Panthers last week certainly perks my ears up a little bit. Like, okay, like sure, maybe. This is, <laughs> I mean, they were rolling so so well there that I was like, oh, the Lions are going to roll through here and not have too much trouble. But all of a sudden, you're like, well, you know, the Bears played them close back in Week 10, and the Bears will be right there. I, I certainly don't – I'm not going to predict the Bears' victory. I mean, eight losses in a row. like they've, they've lost to much worse teams than this Lions team right now. But I do think it's going to feel similarly to Week 10 where there's some back and forth, and the Bears lead at some point in this game, and then – you know, again, I think it comes down to down the stretch. Are the Bears going to be able to execute at the end of the fourth quarter? Will they? Will the offensive line hold up? with receivers be able to make plays? Will Fields be able to get uh, find open receivers downfield and you know lead this team down to a victory? And I just, I, I just don't feel it there yet with all the injuries they have on the offensive line and in the secondary and just I mean across the roster, it's, it wasn't a talented team to start with. And when you take away a bunch of the starting lineup as well, it, it just becomes that much more difficult to beat any opponent. So. If I had to put a score on it, I, I find myself coming back to like 27-20 Lions, but maybe it's tied at 20 apiece with five minutes left in the game and the Lions mm. get a late touchdown and the Bears have a chance with two minutes left to drive down and tie it and ultimately fall short. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the Lions are due to come home, uh, last home game, going to be a raucous crowd. People are into the into this team now and they're in the playoff picture and we're talking about meaningful games in December for a team a year ago that won three games and this season was sitting at one and six and people were ready to to run dan campbell out of town not everybody but some so you know i think that i think the lions have no issues in this game um yes the bears always play them tough yes fields could be a problem but you know 28 13 something like that i think the lions defense will respond i think they've been called out uh that was a really bad performance and showing last week a clunker for sure and look, the Bears have had to play Philly and Buffalo back-to-back -back weeks. I, I, they're, they're, sounds like from what you were saying earlier with all the guys hurt, they're just too beat up. Got to go on the road here um, after the holidays and, you know, in between Christmas and New Year's here. So, uh, like I said, I think the Lions bounce back. I think they win and take care of business 28-13, setting up a Week 18 showdown at Lambeau Field, of all places, Lauren. Um, and Rodgers and the Packers are hot. I mean, nobody sees them more than you and me and being in the same division and having to uh, stomach our friend Peter Bukowski of Lockdown Packers. But <laughs> this is going to be kind of a, interesting, but I think this is a, this is the perfect spot for the Lions to get right against a team, obviously just so banged up and, and so, so bad in the, in the bears. And um, so I think the Lions will, will take care of business here and, uh, and win handily. We'll see, right? You have to, you got to still play the game. It does feel like it's sort of the reverse of where we typically expect these two teams at this stage of the season. Like usually it's like the Bears are borderline playoff team trying to make a push there and the Lions are yeah. the, uh, the three-win team just hanging on for dear life at the end of the season. So I enjoy it. It's a, it's it's a fun spot to be in. I'm glad I'm glad that you guys are getting to have some meaningful December games. Is the vibe though better in Chicago about a three-win team because it's a new coach, new GM and the quarterback yeah. is just getting a chance to do his thing? I mean, it seems like it's not Oh, hell freezing over there and uh, off of Lake Michigan. Yeah, it's it's weird. It's like it feels like the most optimistic eight losses in a row you could have. Like it, the, the morale is still really high. You don't have locker room decisions like uh, like clashes or locker room issues or, you know, guys getting in fights or getting upset. Like they, they, everyone seems to kind of have a good a good perspective on this that like, yeah, no one's admitting that they didn't that they weren't going to win games. The expectation is still to win games, but it's sort of understandable. It's understood that this is not 
really falling below expectations, right? This isn't a super big disappointment for expectations. It's just the reality of where this team is right now. And I think the organization has good perspective on that, but it's going to increase that pressure, you know, next season and beyond, because that's when the expectations are going to start year two of fields in the same offense. Presumably they're going to add some more talent around him and they're going to put him in, in the, the Jalen hurts type of position to say, all right, here's your supporting cast. Here's your team. Go show us what you can do and take that next level. And maybe Jalen Hurts' MVP expectations are a little too high for Fields, but that style of, of situation is what I think everyone's looking ahead to in Chicago. It's interesting. Both teams, I think, would just, um, f- you know, just sort of foam at the mouth over Jalen Carter from Georgia. Mm-hmm. And the Bears need a D tackle that can just, you know, be that guy. And so do the Lions. And uh, I did a mock draft on Wednesday show and, uh, from PFF and the tie they talked about Brian Brissy from Clemson because the Bears took Carter and and a lot of people in Chicago have talked about that. But the line it's a need for both teams next year is everybody's talking about Lions quarterback. You know the Bears aren't drafting one. So they're both going to be kind of near the top of the draft with the Rant Lions having the Rams pick. So uh D tackle a need on both sides. I'm sure you agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. I think Bears fans are still circling their uh, keeping their eye on a trade down, trying to add some even more draft picks. Like, obviously, you don't want to pass up a, a top flight talent like a Jalen Carter or, or Will Anderson Jr. from Alabama. But this team has a lot more needs. And if you can get an extra first round pick to move down or some extra seconds in there as well, you know, they could really uh, spread the wealth there across a bunch of needs on the roster. So it's going to be a fun offseason for sure. Lauren, always a pleasure. A lot of fun and uh, enjoy Sunday. Hey, appreciate you helping me power through here. (laughs) Yo, you're good, brother. You're good. Lauren Cox with us. Locked on Bears. Matt Derry, Locked on Lions. Thursday crossover. We're brought to you by Prize Picks.